Hello, and thank you for joining our Introduction to Design Thinking webinar series. My name is Keith Keating, and I'm a Design Thinking Practitioner with GP Strategies. In this eight-part webinar series, we will be sharing the theory of design thinking from a high-level overview through each of the five phases and finishing with suggestions for ways that you can continue on your journey to becoming a design thinking practitioner. In this session, I will be sharing with you a high-level overview of design thinking to help lay the foundation work for what exactly design thinking is. But before we start talking about design thinking, I want to talk briefly about another concept that you may be familiar with by now, whether you're in the learning and development industry, human resources, or you're just seeing it on LinkedIn or even in the media. The workforce of the future is a concept that everyone is talking about. And there's one question that's being asked repeatedly. What are the skills that will be required in the future? And the answer is, it's our human skills. The human skills we need to be focusing on. The ones that allow us to connect with our learners, our customers, our patients, each other through interpersonal skills, or our logic, our creativity. These are our higher order cognitive skills, and this is where design thinking sets itself up for being a tool that will help us. The three core concepts of design thinking are empathy, problem solving, and creativity, which are also the three most important higher order cognitive skills. So in essence, by learning design thinking, you're also preparing yourself with a critical tool for success in this concept for the future of work. So with that, I want to start by sharing a story with you on design thinking. Some of you may be familiar with this device. Maybe some of you even had this device like myself. The year is 2007 and BlackBerry is on top of the world because they're a powerful billion dollar company who owns 50% of the world's smartphone market. But within about four years, they would go from owning 50% to almost less than 1%. So what happened? How exactly does a company go from that big to that small of a market share? And the answer can be summed up in one quote from BlackBerry executives as they're looking back on this time. Their executives said, we believed that we knew better what customers needed than they did. So BlackBerry heard their customers they just didn't listen to them. Their philosophy was, we know what we're doing. We own 50% of the world's smartphone market. So we're gonna keep doing what we do best. And that's delivering your email, your calendar and your contacts. Well, at the same time, there was a slightly lesser well-known computer company, of course, Apple, which was launching their first smartphone device, the iPhone. And within four years, they would topple BlackBerry and be the new, world industry leader in smartphone devices. So what did Apple do that was so different from BlackBerry? And that can be summed up in one quote from Steve Jobs. We focus on people's needs and desires rather than only the needs of the business. We focus on people's needs and desires rather than just what they do well. This is the core concept of design thinking focusing on people's needs and desires. So what is design thinking? It's a set of principles for creative problem solving. It's a methodology that asks us to take a step back from the problem that's in front of us and think about the human on the other end of that problem, which helps lead to human-centered products, services, and internal processes. Design thinking helps to unlock the needs and the problems of our users, our learners, our customers, our patients, even when they don't know what they are or they're not able to articulate them, which can often be an example of challenges that we face in the learning development industry. So what is design thinking? In essence, it's a focus on understanding people. So within design thinking, consider this. If I'd asked customers what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. And this is a quote that's often attributed to Henry Ford, although it's not been proven yet that it was actually him that said it, but it's still a fantastic quote. So think about that for a minute. If I'd asked customers what they wanted, they would have said faster horses because customers didn't know that an automobile was an option. 
They only knew the solution that was already in front of them. And design thinking helps us take a step back to get to that root cause, to understand what that challenge is, to help our customers be able to articulate it, even when they can't articulate it for themselves. So design thinking has five phases, empathy, define, ideate, prototype, and test. Empathy is where we learn about the audience. You'll notice that we start here with empathy. We don't start with a problem, defining the problem. We start first with learning about our customers, our end users, our patients, whoever that human is. Once we take the time to learn about them, to practice empathy research, then we take all of that data. And then from there, we define the problem statement. And once we define the problem statement based off of what we've learned, through the empathy phase, then we ideate, we brainstorm, we come up with as many as ideas as we can, and then we narrow those ideas down. And we build out quick representations of those ideas in the prototype phase. And then of course we test our ideas and we get user feedback. Now, when you look at the five phases of design thinking, it might look like they're linear, but they're actually not. Design thinking is a non-linear, iterative process, meaning that any one of these phases can be happening at the same time, or maybe not even in the same order. For example, by the time you get to the ideate phase, and you're coming up with brainstorms, you might take a step back and think, are we actually solving for the right problem? Is this truly what our users need us to be solving for? No problem. Go back, talk to them again, or better yet, even include some of them in your ideation session. Or by the time you get to the test phase, you might find out that your prototype failed. And that's okay. That's part of the methodology and the process behind design thinking is to fail fast, forward, quickly to get to the right solutions to meet the needs of our users. Another way to think about design thinking is empathy. The other phases, define, ideate, prototype, and test, you're probably already doing some of those. So what sets design thinking apart? And that is empathy. That's making sure that we are connecting to our learners, our customers, our end users, our patients, those humans, to make sure that we're solving for them, not for us, not for our business partners, not for whoever has shared that order with us, but we are solving for the humans on the other end of that problem. So empathy should be happening throughout your entire design thinking initiative. And of course, you don't need design thinking to be practicing empathy. We should be practicing that in everything that we do. Now, one of the questions that's often asked is, what's the difference between design thinking and other problem solving methodologies like Lean Six Sigma, Agile, PDCA? Those are all fantastic problem solving methodologies, each with a great use case. I use all of them. Where design thinking sets itself apart is that it starts before you are looking to solve the problem. It starts at problem finding. Whereas the other, Lean Six Sigma, Agile, PDCA, they start when you have that problem already identified and you know what it is you're trying to solve, those are great methodologies to use. But in the case of design thinking, where you may not know actually what the problem is, or you want to go back and validate that that is the right problem or understand from your learners or users what their challenges are. That's where you employ design thinking. So problem finding versus problem solving. Another way to look at this is on the chart on the screen, we've broken out Lean Six Sigma or Demaic, PDCA and design thinking. And there's a lot of cross pollination between those phases, except for one. There's one glaring gap that separates design thinking, and that is starting with empathy, starting with understanding. Now, yes, the defined phase in Demaic may have some understanding or empathy in there. Of course, that depends on the person actually executing this methodology. And the same for PDCA, your plan may have some empathy, but where design thinking sets itself apart is it starts very clearly with empathy, with understanding. So if you prefer to make, or you prefer PDCA or another problem solving methodology, no problem. Just make sure that you're starting with empathy so that you're understanding your users so that you're solving the right problem that meets their needs and that you're keeping them connected through those phases to constantly be checking in where the opportunity does exist. 
So again, the message is not that design thinking is better than one methodology or another. It simply starts with understanding the human. Another question that's often asked is design thinking a trend? Is it a new corporate buzzword that's going to be here for a couple of years? And in my opinion, the answer is no, it is not a trend and it will be here for a long time. Simply, if you just look at the higher order cognitive skills and the fact that design thinking is comprised of three of the top most important human skills that we have, problem solving, creativity, empathy, that alone sets itself up for future success. But design thinking has been around since the late 50s, early 60s. It's become more prominent once Stanford University created the D School, which is a school that is based around the design thinking methodology. Then of course we have IDEO out of San Francisco using design thinking to solve product designs. You've got Apple who attributes the success of their product designs to design thinking. And so that all began making design thinking more popular in the 90s, early 2000s. And from there it's continued to grow. And not only in terms of product design, but services, processes, or even just continuous improvement. Design thinking is a great tool if you're just looking at how can we be better at whatever it is that we're doing. So the answer is design thinking is not a trend. So how do I know when to apply design thinking? First and foremost, design thinking is not a solution for every single challenge that you have. If you already are very clear on what that problem is, you may not need to be using design thinking. But some questions that you can ask yourself. First of all, is the problem human centered? If it is, design thinking could be a tool for you to use. If you don't clearly understand the problem, or maybe you don't have alignment with your team on what you're actually trying to solve for, design thinking may be a great tool. The problem is fairly complex. You look at design thinking, or maybe individually or even with your team, you're looking to come up with some fresh ideas or a fresh approach on solving a challenge for your users. Design thinking may be a great tool for you to use. And in upcoming sessions, I'll be sharing actual examples of design thinking in practice. And so make sure to check out our next session on the value of design thinking. So this concludes our session today on the overview of design thinking. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to sharing more ideas and best practices with you. And don't forget to check out the rest of our design thinking site and make sure to use the contact form to reach out, out to us at any time or simply add me on LinkedIn to continue the conversation on design thinking. Thank you.